So let's make our subroutine do something a little more versatile than simply saying that it's producing a cup of something without specifying what it is. After all, we're giving three arguments here to the make cuppa subroutine, and it's not doing anything with them at present. So how do we access the arguments that we're passing to the make cuppa subroutine? The answer is that we use a special variable called the arguments array, and that's spelled out by using the at sign followed by an underscore. Now it's quite similar when we look at it in scalar context to the default variable. So at first glance it's easy to confuse those two. The reason we know that it's not the default variable is that there is a pair of square brackets after it which implies that instead of a simple scalar variable it's actually an array being called in scalar context to output one of its elements. So this is the first element of the arguments being passed to make cuppa. Let's see what happens if we run this script. It outputs the first thing that we pass to it as an argument, which is t. We can do a for each loop to loop over all the arguments that we're passing to the make cuppa subroutine. And here we are using the default variable. The reason we're doing using the default variable here is that because we're using a for each loop on the arguments array, each element is automatically transferred to the default variable. So when we go back to our script, each of the arguments has been passed into the arguments array and can be used as elements of this array. But let's see about making a string and printing it out to standard output and it'll say something like here is a cup of white tea with one sugar. Actually in this case because we've specified zero for the second argument it'll be black tea. Now this is all very well as long as we're passing those particular arguments to the function. As soon as we change it then we're not getting the kind of results that we really want. So what we need to do is instead of simply saying t over here, we need to use one of the elements of the arguments array, the first one, instead of the first argument here. Then we need to find a way of turning the second argument, which is zero for no milk or one for milk, into something more readable. So let's just wrap that up in an if statement which is going to test to see if the second element of the arguments array is true or false. One evaluates true and zero false so we can safely conclude that color should be white if the second argument is true or black if it's false. So then we're able to say And finally, we can use the third argument, element number two of the arguments array, directly in the subroutine inside the string. And we'll put a new line character right at the end there as well. Moving back to our command prompt, a cup of coffee with one sugar. So it's correctly interpreting all the arguments of our call to the subroutine and producing an appropriate response.